Hi, Anna Meyer here again, and now it's time to look at one of these devices that I've heard a lot of people have problems with, but it's a very useful device. It's the coastal erosion. And normally we you have erosion to make the landscape look natural. And the problem is that the coastal areas have a different type of erosion. They have wave effects that, that water come keep pounding at the, the, the coastline and, and simply wear down the mountains and create beaches and kind of lowlands in inland quite a bit, especially over long long periods of time. And there is a special device in, in World Machine to simulate that. And it's called coastal erosion. And if you look at the the um, overlay view here, you can see put on the 3D view. Here you can see that the device creates beaches along the, the whole coastline like this. And it also creates some weird beaches inland a little bit and and it creates beaches along basically uniformly along the whole the whole area. And the reason it creates them inland is that we have two different we have the the highlands here and we have the lowlands here created before. So one of the the key things is to isolate coastal erosion to where we want it. And that's usually the problem with with the that most people say that, ero that coastal erosion just flattens everything and it has a tendency of doing that. But first you have to go in and, and check the settings. And there is a bunch of settings. First you can you can apply at the global sea level, in this case 375 meters. But you can also use it as a form of terracing, meaning you can put it up or down and you can, if you look at the preview here, you can simply use it as there might be an ancient lake somewhere or there might be an ancient ocean or something like that. So you can use it as a very, very powerful form of terracing that make one terrace at a very, very defined part, so to speak. Instead of lots of small terracing here and there, you can have a major terracing. And they can be some interesting effects. But in this case, we're going to use it for the current ocean level. So I put, I tick this box. And then the next one is beach size. And here you see it's a little bit over a kilometer. And here I can simply increase it or decrease it. And also look that it affects a little bit of the inland, but look at the outside here what happens out in the ocean. That's where the, you get these enormous beach areas where you can have smaller. So in this case, I'll, I'll set down for about this, about 800 meters or 700 meters, something. And then you hit the inland height influence. And this you can kind of, you see you can wear down almost any mountain chain wherever it is. So in this case, I will I will go for something like this. And then the third thing you can set here is that you can set the underwater smoothing and that simply just blurs all the terrain features that is below the, the sea, what you set as a sea level in here. And make sure, remember that, that if you don't use the global sea level and you put it above sea level, if you don't mask coastal erosion, it will blur the rest of the terrain that is below whatever sea level you set in here. It can be useful, but it can also cause quite a, a bit of a of, a, of an annoying problem if you're not aware of it. So these are the settings that we will live with for this example. And now we have our coastal erosion everywhere, but to just have uniform beaches like this all around the island doesn't look particularly natural and it doesn't make for interesting terrain. So in order to do that, I've, I've done like you all doing all the good cooking shows. I have my devices already ready to 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 use here so i've created i've uh, created a layout generator that i've named coastal erosion and i will simply put it in here and then i'll attach it to the mask input here and all of a sudden you can see if we look at the view from the top here we have the coastal erosion and i've created a small circle here and i've created a polygon meaning now i defined the beaches to this area here and the cool here you get you can choose the the fallout distance so I can have the the beach spreading and this island is not more than 
like five, six, seven kilometers long, so I shouldn't have a fallout that is more than about a kilometer or so. But I can also set the strength by changing the, the elevation of the circle here, that is the, the same as the strength. Or I can set the opacity, it, it will basically create the, it's the same thing. I'm not sure if World Machine actually differs from these two. I don't know. I, they always seem to do the same thing to me, so I'm not really sure. But in this case, it, it creates the same result. So you can just apply it gradually, like you want a little bit of a beach or more, or you can also set the fall off. And these create uniform beaches within the areas of, of that you select for, for having it, that you want to apply it. And that's good and, and 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 well let's take a look at it more and render it and here you have it and it creates kind of you get the beach and and it's good for most and you get the this kind of sloping from the rest of the landscape down but sometimes you want to have that kind of extra detail so that you want the the beaches to be varied and you want some sandbanks and you want all sorts of cool details that add that extra touch to it and that means that, like in World Machine, we can use devices for a lot of different things. And what we need is a purlin. And so I've created a little purlin here. And then we simply pipe the purlin into the mask between the layout controller and the purlin. So we put the layout controller and it guides the shapes of the, the purlin. And then we mask the purlin in here. And now when we take a little look here, in the 3D view, we can already see that we get a bit of a jagged edge, and let's render it here. And you see we got we got a cool, very varied here. And depending on on the um, the advanced purlin, I've set a, a size. Hang on a second here. I've s this time I've set a size to, a size to 320 meters, just basic, like rounded small hills and you can work with the persistence, the elevation, and the steepness. So I just put in something that kind of looks cool. So you, you tweak each of them until you get something that, that looks good. But if you look closely, I'm going to render this so we can see them more detailed. We have one problem is that now we have these small sandy hills, so to speak, hilly or bubbly terrain everywhere. We only want that in the beaches and we don't want it in the rest of the place. And that's because when we only use the, the shaping guide means that this purlin will spread all over the place. So I do, um, I mask the the, uh, the purlin with the uh, layout generator as well. So I both shape it and mask it using the layout generator. And now when I go in here and render it, I only have the purlin applied to the beach areas and nothing else. So this way you can you can kind of create interesting beaches and you can put now I only have one general coastal erosion that is used for the whole thing. You could put s different ones here so you can plug one of these in from this terrain and another one for that terrain and so on and so forth and use a common layout generator and use different purlins for w for different of them and that will create a very a varied beach that look completely different in different areas so different types of terrain have different beaches and then you can blend that with textures and you get a terrain that is lifelike really believable so that's the basics of um, and how to use the coastal erosion. So it is a very useful, nifty tool in the toolbox that just requires a little bit of, of, of input and control and, and it can be really useful. So don't shy away from it. It's, it's, it's one of the vital things in making a landscape believable. So thank you so much for watching and you can check out my Patreon at the link below. Thank you so much.